In French, we say, jeter le bébé avec l'eau du bain. That we, we're not gonna throw away the baby with a bath water. We have that too, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you probably have some equivalent. I'm, I'm totally convinced of that. Welcome to Art and Technology. Today we're going to be discussing transactional art. And I'm joined by media pioneer Maurice Benayoun and artist Kevin McCoy. Um, so Maurice, you know, I think you're recognized for having contributed some of the first networked artworks to the kind of contemporary art world. And I'm just kind of interested to hear what kind of got you interested in new digital and network tools as tools for art making today. It started with uh, mostly uh, video art installation, interactive installation, the early 80s. I created the very first series made of computer graphics called Quarks. And then I started uh, to work on urban media art, where I represented the emotions of the world as values compared to the financial stock. This was the beginning of the works that I call transactional media. Uh, Kevin, I would actually like to bring in some earlier work and maybe start to get the lines in this idea of transaction and exchange. Um, and so in the case of you know, my project, a monograph in, in 2014 was an idea of using a blockchain as a means of provenance and ownership for digital art. Um, now we would call this idea an NFT. Uh, back then I came up with the term monograph, which was a sort of portmanteau for monetized graphics. And th there I made the decision to try to pursue it in an entrepreneurial way. Maurice, I wonder if you could talk about how your work has distributed poetic forms among networks where you might not expect them. With a Value of Values project, which is a project where people use brainwaves to give shape to human abstractions and then to give shape to values. And these values become tokens on the blockchain. The interesting thing is that as soon as they become tokens, they can start trading them. So if I want to have something like love, and so uh, if you give money to get love, it generates automatically what I call transactional poetry. So in my case, uh, I was able to construct a transaction that took a set of metadata um, that defined the artwork and included a simple assertion of ownership based on that token. And I was able to create transactions that encapsulate all of that information. Like, Kevin, is transaction art's final form? <laughs> I'd love to hear your thoughts about that. Transaction has always been a part of art making. You know, you can imagine uh, a gift exchange, but art has also had uh, a private function. But as an artist, I can assure you of that. <laughs> that uh, the act of most making- of it, Most of it is private. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. The act of making is its own, an end in itself and its own reward and its own frustration. I think Kevin's kind of made an interesting argument just now that we're entering an age of transaction. So yeah, let's just put it to you. Like Maurice, do you think that transaction is art's final form? Uh, no, anybody who tells you, uh, I know the final form of art is actually starting to make a, a big mistake <laughs> because there is no final form of art because art is always what goes beyond the final form. Thanks for joining Art and Technology. In part two, we'll think a bit more speculatively and we'll discuss how technologies like the blockchain will evolve in relation to art and we'll come to a better understanding of how transaction works in art. Hyundai Motor, connecting art and technology.